Hey, good morning. Linda and I have had a really nice morning here up uh, in central Nevada, just about 30 miles north of Tonopah. And we're in the Toyobi National Forest on Highway, or on National Forest Road 440. It's hot. Hot. <laughs> but it's, it's nice in the shade, real hot in the sun. But we're going to go up the mountain here and do some exploring, and we're going to bring you along. Well, we've had a really nice morning up here on above Manhattan, <laughs> Manhattan, Nevada. Oh, the power unit's charging back up fast, this blazing sun. Up above us, are all, there's a lot of mines, in fact, just, not just above us here, but everywhere around here. But Linda and I want to go up there and explore a little bit. There's all kinds of um, refuse or garbage laying in the area, but it's all from the uh, 1960s. All the cans and everything look like they're from the 50s and 60s. And I know that some of these mines up here are still in operation, or they're still active claims anyway. So do I go left or do I go right? Uh, looks a little tight up in there. Let's try this. You know, the road's kind of washed away on the left side here. Okay. Uh, I'll hug the right side. Okay, we lived. <laughs> so far, so good. Well, if nothing else, it's interesting. There's a road taken off to the right, but I can't make the turn. So we'll go straight. Well, not too straight. What is this? Well, I don't know where this takes us. But there's mines up in here. I saw on the map, there's all these squiggly little roads like this. Oh, there's something. Yeah, it looks like we've got a mine up here. Looks like people do come up here. Oh, geez, I hope we can turn around. Well, it's got kind of a loop thing here. Alrighty, time to park it and go look around. See motorcycle track and ATV track. Oh, there, there's a shaft right there. Yeah, let me get parked, okay? Somewhere up here, around here. Oh, I can park in the shade. Can't beat that. 
Well, it's kind of a beautiful sight to see when you come up after a long day's work down in the mine. Well, this is some kind of a shed. Plenty of uh, shotgun shots on it. See both uh, <laughs> buckshot, birdshot. Nothing in here now. Work shed of some sort. Looks like there's probably shelves back here in this corner. I don't know what use they would have had for a one-man submarine, but they have one. Oh, that's a big, big steel tank. Well, it kind of smells kind of oily, so I don't know. But I don't know. Is it? Just pointed out that steel pipe going up the hill. Must have been the water? Yeah, maybe water. That's about a six inch line. Might be a spring up there, but I don't see any water down here. Big platform for something. Real heavily constructed. Can you get inside? Oh, there's a there's a grate on the back. Let me go get a light. Yeah, it's blocked off. Oh, it's cool in here, Linda. Come on in. Abandoned mines, stay out and stay alive. I imagine. Oh, wow. There we go. Let me get up here a little higher. You can see the rails going in. Um, that's ventilation pipe on the left, upper left side there. Some lengths of it laying down there on the ground. That pipe on the right, I'm just looking at it, I'm going to guess it's compressed air. I don't know. To run the equipment. And back she goes. They mined copper, silver first, copper, um, lead, antimony. And my flashlight's getting too hot to hold. Ooh, booger, it does get hot. I'll whack my head on the uh, oh. <laughs> and I'm short. Yeah, I was gonna say you're too short to whack your head. I know I hit my head on the beam too coming out. <laughs> oh gee. This is a that's my old light flashlight that I've had for I don't know a long time now, but boy on turbo mode within about 30 seconds it's too hot to hold. This is the one that'll uh, burn you if it goes off in your pocket, it'll burn you really bad. But it has a lockout feature on it, which I always make sure the lockout feature is turned on, so that never happens. Oh my goodness, how did that happen? Well, that's a piece of railing, and it's twisted around in a circle. I saw Superman do that once. He must have been here. <laughs> it's probably why they abandoned the mine. <laughs> <laughs> well... Let's go see what else we can find. Yeah. Gonna head up higher. Okay, this looks a little steep. So we'll go up it. Off on the right there. Wait, I gotta get up this first. I can't stop here. Oh man, I hope I can get up this. Uh, 
Okay, just barely. All right. Yeah, that was a hard one. Okay, let's go take a look at what we just passed. Whatever the heck that was. Yeah, man, that's a deep rut. I just came up it right through here. Well, pretty place to be broke down, but we're okay. Let's go check this out down here. I think it's a, it looks like a cover over a shaft. Look at that. Just to keep something really big from coming out of there. <laughs> something big lives down the hole. Oh my. I wonder how deep this hole is. What do you folks see down there? Of course we're gonna to toss a rock to see if we can hear it hit bottom. First it's gonna clank on the rail. just hit or I just lost it. Whoo, that's deep. Well, let's go further up the road. Well, it's getting kind of narrow. Going up. Oh, there's another building. It looks like I can turn around, thank goodness. And I see, an, looks like an adit in the back. This looks like a shed or a outhouse. <laughs> I think this is an outhouse that's fallen over here. And that would have been the seat right there inside and it's tipped over. Well, we found the outhouse. Oh, some big metal structure back there. We'll have to go check that out in a minute. Up above, I see tailings up there. What we got over here on the ground. Oh, you know what that is? That looks like the armature out of a big motor. This thing is more than two feet in diameter, the outside. It's more like almost between two feet, 24 inches and 30 inches wide total. Give you an idea. What's inside there, Linda? Uh, not much anymore. I'm going to go in. Okay. I'm going in. There's a pipe coming in. It goes out the other end of the building over there. A more air duct. That's what this is. And a big compressor right there.
Huh. Maybe that's what that electric motor hooked up to. I'll betcha. Let me get my flashlight out for you guys. Except we're not going on turbo mode this time. So with this wheel here, that motor that we were looking at just laying on the ground out there would have sat right there, bolted down, and would have run this compressor. Looking for a name. There it is, but I can't make it out. What's that noise? What noise? Okay, Linda's freaking me out. She says there's a noise coming from inside the mine. It stopped? There's another building there. Oh, I feel cool air. Oh, now I'm feeling cold air. Now I'm feeling really cold air. Man, it is freezing right here. This is like a winter's day. Can't see into this mine. Let me tell you, there's a breeze coming out of here. Hey, um, we got that thermometer in the car. Yeah. Let's get it and set it up here and see what the temperature is. This is cold. What I want to know is what was making that noise. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I heard it briefly when you first mentioned it. This is a active federal and state mining claim, current 2022. I wouldn't want to work in here, man, it is freezing cold. Oh, it's the gate making noise. The breeze blows the gate. Something rattling the gate, because I don't feel that much of a breeze to move a metal gate. And when the breeze is strong, it stops. I heard it again. That's spooky. Yep. Because that last sound was further, further in. in. I heard the gate making noise and then I heard a thunk further in. What you think is the gate. It's, I... <laughs> Freaky. Man, it is freezing cold. Yeah, just as I turned to walk, walk away, I heard the noise. Okay, I'm going to go get the thermometer. I'm going to come back here. Okay, I'll go stand in the sun. Okay. Okay, if you're gonna wait here for me in front of this gate, you keep the camera. And if it starts making noise, make sure you get it, okay? All right, here's the camera. It's on right now. Bye, Rick. Be nice to know you. <laughs> Whatever it is, I hope it doesn't get you. <laughs> Nah, battery's dead in it. Wow, that's cold. I'm feeling it here, standing in the sun. Did that gate make any noise? Mm -mm. Or whatever? <laughs> I almost feel like just leaving the camera go to catch that. <laughs> yeah. When I heard, first heard it from over there, it was doing it for quite a while. Huh. I'm going to go look in this building over here. Okay. And we'll try to be quiet. Maybe we can hear that again. Let me move carefully up in here so we don't get snake bit or something.
I don't hear nothing. Okay, this is just a room. Something scurried across the floor right there. Just empty. Except for what looks like a flue pipe there for a stove. Beer can. About it. Oh, that's a lizard down there. See him? Hi, buddy. Sorry to interrupt your your day. This gate here, it takes a lot to make it move, make it move and make that sound, and that's not the sound we heard. Now, out there in the sunshine is 95 degrees. Back here where I'm standing right next to this gate, it seriously feels like 45 degrees, maybe 50, because I'm hot, right, from being outside, but it's super cold. Well, there's no fresh footprints or anything going in here, so nobody's been in here for a long time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. It's got to be the air currents. Hello. Okay. Okay. Woohoo! That freaked me out. Yeah, it's got to be the wind passing through there. <laughs> it's not that metal gate making the noise. It's back there on that wooden gate something. That, <laughs> but still. Still pretty... kind of spooky when you're out here. And... Yeah, it made my heart jump, let me tell you. Because <laughs> I was standing right next to that metal gate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Very hot anymore. That mine gave me the chills. Over here on the side is a huge drum. This looks bigger than a 55 gallon drum, but it's a really uh, heavy, heavy, heavy thing. Really super heavy. Don't know what they're using that for. It's all set in the rocks here. Over here, away from that noisy mine, <laughs> is something. We'll take a look at the top first. Looks like rails went out on top of it. Oh yeah, there's rail coming in here, curving. One rail is missing. And then it goes out on top of that big iron structure. Boy, that's all riveted iron. Let's go down and take a look at that from the bottom. You can see where the rail comes in. Obviously, it was for dumping something in here. You mine experts can tell me. I'm going to try to not to slip and break my neck. One thing that catches my eye is that metal hook sticking hanging down there on that uh, L, L bracket. This is old stuff here rivets like that. This has got to be from the late 1800s, early 1900s. This is for loading ore in, into something else. Because look, I'm going to look up to the left towards the mine where my car is parked. And this is all rocky now, but look how this is made like this. I'm going to swing gently to the right here. And look how it's level and it goes up into the road over there. So evidently trucks or something would come through here, all in ore. I'm just guessing. That's what it looks like to me though. Well, we're headed back down here a bit. Uh, I got that tough spot to go through where I banged the bottom of the car coming up.
Yeah, it's coming up right around this corner here. Okay. Well, here it is. Well, we've sure gotten a lot of new pinstriping on this trip, <laughs> including right there. Well, Linda's getting herself ready. We're pulling out this morning. This has been a nice camp spot, but uh, I'm just going to go for a short ride. Just a, There's a fork in the road that I didn't take. I'm just going to go up there and take a quick look around. No, I'm not. There's rain coming. How did that happen? Looks like it might miss us. Yep, here it is. Interesting. Blowing the dust around and so one thing I like about this Yukon is it's got the door in the back that folds up and you can get out of the rain underneath it. Luckily, we're headed right into the wind, too. Nah, yeah, still coming down a little bit. Just don't want to mess up the camera lens when I start riding. Well, that rain was interesting. <laughs> Didn't drop much, but it got a little windy there for a bit. It's funny because I could hear it coming. All right, I just want to go look around the corner up here. That's all. Rocky, rocky road. Linda and I went to the left yesterday. I don't know if I can get up here. It's pretty rocky. I'm doing it. Oh, yeah. It amazes me what the bike can do all the time. Whew. Looks like we're up to wherever we're up to. Just don't know what it is that we're up to. Oh, I see where we are. We're back up to the spooky mine. This is where I had trouble in that ravine yesterday with the car. Okay, I know where we're at. Well, now I know where the road goes. Well, this area has had a lot of rain this spring. Uh, we had that big uh, floods and wash, road washouts in Yellowstone. And if you look, you'll see that this wash has covered the road here. 
And down in the town below us, the town of Manhattan, they're still cleaning up their streets from mud flows uh, that uh, flooded their, their downtown area. There's not a downtown. There used to be. But anyways, their, their, um, their main section of town there is got flooded too and kind of wiped out. But they're still cleaning it up. Yesterday there was bulldozers and uh, graders and stuff cleaning up their streets. But there's signs that there's been a lot of rain here in Nevada this spring. At least in this part of Nevada, which is uh, central to north central. Yeah, see, we're back at that mine, the spooky mine. Actually, that mine did kind of freak me out yesterday. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we can find something else that's laying around here. Oh, I see one thing. I got to tell you, just as I was walking up here, the wind swung that door wide open. Wham! This place continues to freak me out. <laughs> yeah. One, one thing I didn't notice yesterday was the up above is a big boulder wall that they built. Those are large boulders and it's to divert the water coming down that ravine because the entrance to the mine is right there. Well, Linda and I are heading out of here this morning. Uh, we're heading for Tonopah so we can get groceries, do wash some clothes, um, get gas. Um, just, you know, regroup in general. We, the most we paid for gas on this trip was just recently in Austin, Nevada. There's one gas station there and he takes full advantage of it. You see, when you get to Austin, you pretty much have to buy gas to get to the, you know, so you make sure you got enough to get to the next place. His gas was 520 a gallon there. This area is like, is like 499. So I guess he's not that much above everybody else. Back home, it's under $4 now. And uh, I talk like that's a good thing. It really doesn't free you up to travel much, so does it. Anyway, I was real tempted to get the metal detector out here, but you don't know when you're on a mining claim and when you're not. Uh, mining claims are not private property. Um, I suppose around the mine here, they could what, they might want to keep you out for because it's dangerous, but... Uh, they're not private property. They're a mining claim. It means you can't go in there and <coughs> metal detect or pan for gold or anything like that. If that the, the mineral rights belong to somebody else. Um, there's a sign, there's a post down below me here. And you can bet that had a mining claim tag on it at one time. But I happen to know from the sign in the, uh, in the mine back there that, that it, this is still an active mining claim. The size, see that trunk that's cut down there? That's a juniper or cedar. And look at the size of it compared to the others. <laughs> that old tree was massive. If I had time, I'd go up there and count the rings. There's a Prince Albert can. Oop, top just fell off it. A lot of quartz in the area. Like this big quartz rock here. A lot of arsenic. I guess there's a couple different kinds of arsenic here. One is bright, bright, bright orange and it's powdery. So they say don't pick up orange rocks here and then lick your fingers. Another one is a black rock. And if you pick it up, you can actually immediately taste it in your mouth from what you absorb through your skin. It's also arsenic, really dangerous. Toxic. Those orange rocks I was talking about, they're not, they're not like lichen orange, like there's lichen all over these, orange lichen all over these rocks. These are bright, like almost like fluorescent orange and they look kind of powdery. That's the arsenic ones that I saw in the museum anyway. It was really interesting going to the little museum. There's not much in there, but one thing that's in there is a man named Tony. He runs the place, <coughs> or he was, 
he was he was there yesterday operating the place and he told us that Howard Hughes came in here and bought up you know he's you know all the rights and everything or speculated you know he's put a lot of poured a lot of money into here and and then the mines shut down and then they opened back up in the 1980s and they went gangbusters for a while but the quality of the gold here was never that good um, you would find something you'd find a pocket of gold and then you'd have to dig back in the mine another 100 feet before you'd find another pocket of gold rather than finding a, a continuous vein or something like that. So these mines never really paid off here. Like any mining town, the town of Manhattan has quite a colorful history, a lot of colorful characters. The museum was in the school. They went in and refurbished that building entirely. They got a government grant. And it's quite interesting on the inside. It's interesting looking on the outside because of all the stacks coming up through the roof. I think they burned coal. He told me they all burned coal. So every room had a coal burner in it. So there's all these stacks coming up through the, through the roof of the building. That was the first thing that caught our eyes. It's like, what the heck? So we drove over there and found out it was the library museum now. And there's one other business in town, and that's the bar. I'm sure you can find some colorful characters in the bar that did could uh, enlighten you on the area also. <laughs> I better get back down the mountain. Linda's probably up wondering where I'm at. More exactly, she's probably wondering where her coffee is at. <laughs> I'm going to go down and make her a cup of coffee.